Welcome to the Path of Mystica podcast, where we talk about subjects of a spiritual nature, with the focus being on spiritual awakening. This is an open space where everyone is welcome. So sit back and relax and enjoy these very raw and uncensored talks with the ultimate purpose of guiding you back to your very own heart space so that you can live your greatest truth. I'm your host, Billy. It's good to have you here. Okay, so welcome to my new-ish podcast, and today we're going to talk about what is spiritual awakening? So many questions that I get from TikTok and YouTube about what exactly is spiritual awakening? Well, let's look at it like this. Imagine that when you were a little child, you were programmed to think the way your parents wanted you to think, to act the way they wanted you to act. And they were programmed to think and act like their parents wanted them to think and act. So you are a product of this long chain of programs. Now, some of these programs probably serve an amazing purpose, such as learning how to gather and prepare food and all of that good stuff, right? But the majority of these programs that you have collected in your life that eventually became programs from your teachers, uh, social media, TV shows, the world at large, all of these programs began to conflict in your mind and you identified with this conglomerate of programs. So this is why you're able to say, I am this religion or I am this belief system. I am male or female or transgendered. I am tall, short, big, little, black, white, all of these things attributes, not only do we take on these sometimes factual attributes, but we take on the story that comes along with these attributes. And that also turns into anxiety and depression and OCD and body image issues and all of the things that you suffer from in this life. So imagine this is what has happened to you and everybody else in your life everybody else in the world. And so now everybody is walking around like a zombie with these programs out in front of them, following these programs because they think they are supposed to or that they have to, because it all roots back into fear. And people are afraid to discover who they really are. So they keep living out this age-old tradition and these generational curses And all of these things that come along with these programs, sure, I'm happy for you that you learned how to wash your hands and bathe and prepare food and drive a car. These are wonderful programs. And by no means am I suggesting discarding these programs. But a spiritual awakening is when you are bumbling along on this earth, programmed, doing what you think you're supposed to do, being what you think you're supposed to be. And suddenly, for one reason out of many, everything comes to a momentary halt. It is what I call walking through the doorway of stillness. Suddenly, everything inwardly goes still. The mind stops, and suddenly, something appears. Or something appears to appear. But that something is within you. That power, that force, that consciousness, this energy. Maybe for the first time in your life or at least the first time since you were young. You are catching a glimpse of this stillness that is beyond the mind. It is before the mind. And it is this stillness of peace of pure awareness. This is what we call a spiritual awakening because you have become aware of the spiritual side of who you are or the spiritual self or the beingness. So 
So we are called human beings because there's two parts, as you could say. There is the human aspect to who we are, which is made up of a cellular structure, biology, and a mind that can be programmed, and the program operates and runs the cellular biology, this human side of to who we are in this 3D realm. But there's also a spiritual side to who we are. Whether you're an atheist or religious, it it does not matter because all of those things are also part of the program. But beyond and before the program is the beingness or the consciousness of who and what we are. This consciousness is so powerful, yet All we do in our life is focus our attention only on this false character that we believe ourselves to be. Then we lose focus of this pure awareness, this consciousness that is the substratum of who and what we are. So having a spiritual awakening, perhaps maybe to some people that sounds something magical. Well, in some sense, it is magical. Or maybe somebody else, it it sounds cultish to them. I have so many people that reach out to me and ask questions about cult, which we can certainly get into in another podcast. So regardless of how the term spiritual awakening sounds to you, because I can reword it any way that feels better to you. Spiritual awakening is you basically dropping all that you are not and seeing what is left and becoming alive with this power and energy to live from that place, not just to take a glimpse of it and then go back into ego, into the program mind. A spiritual awakening is becoming aware that this program exists in the first place. Then becoming aware that there is something aware of this program that is outside of the program, that can witness and watch the program. It can witness and watch the programs in everyone else, in everything that you see. Of course, until we get into nature, where nature is programless, and that nature connects with us from that same source from which we are, which is this energy, this prana. This awareness, it's beautiful. But the moment we step back into a city, we can feel the vibrations and the frequencies of all the program people. And this is why we have so much trouble in this world. It's why people can't get along because everyone is programmed at least slightly different. This is why when you take a religion such as Christianity, there's so many different denominations because so many people have been programmed slightly different. Different enough to create a separation between their counterparts. When I was eight years old, I had my first spiritual awakening. I had not studied religion or spirituality. I was not a philosopher. I was a typical eight-year-old kid. Playing with Star Wars figures, little motorcycles and cars. And one day I walked out into the woods of Alaska where we lived, Fort Greeley, Alaska, about an hour from Fairbanks, Alaska. And these woods, my my father always told me, don't go into these woods because literally where we were at in this place uh, in Alaska, you could go into these woods and walk for 3,000 miles across Canada before you see another person. So it was very isolated. My dad said, don't ever go in these woods because all the time we would see moose and sometimes even bear. So I would always play at the edge of these woods because it was only about a football field's length from our house. So I was allowed to play at the edge, but one day that edge was not enough. And this is what people do in their life with their living from their heart. People live at the edge and they say, one day I will start living from my heart. One day I will put all the bullshit down. One day I'll stop being a people pleaser or whatever it is. 
and hopefully someday you do. And this was for me at eight years old, standing at the edge of these woods, knowing that there was something in the woods that was calling me. It was like my heart was connecting to the trees, to the earth beneath my feet. The sky was open and wide. It seemed infinite. So I started walking down this little path. It was put there by someone, but I don't know. It was presented to me on this particular day. And I said, I started to walk down this path. I don't know what happened, especially at eight years old with no knowledge of spiritual awakening. Suddenly, it felt as if I disappeared. Not my body, not my 3D physical structure. I'm pretty sure it was still there. But I, this personality, this character, this program that I had collected over eight years of my life at that point had disappeared. I was no longer that person. Why, I don't know. But I became the very consciousness, this this collective consciousness, this cosmic consciousness connected to the trees. I felt like I was the trees. I was the the earth beneath my feet. I remember hearing a bird singing, but the singing, the source of that singing was coming from my own heart as if I was in fact the bird. And of course, from what I know now, I, I am the bird. I am the earth. I am the trees. I was the forest in the sky. But why this happened that day, I do not know, but it did, in fact, happen, and something woke me up. I didn't know what to call it, and I continued to walk effortlessly down this trail, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, I don't know. There was no time. Time did not exist. The character of Billy did not exist, only this pure awareness. And then... I could hear something. It sounded foreign to me at first, but I could hear my dad calling me from the distance. He must have seen me walk into the trail or he was looking for me. But either way, I could hear him calling from a distance. And at first, that call just sounded like some kind of foreign language to me because I did not recognize the word Billy. I did not recognize the call of my father. But within a few seconds, it's like this cloak just just came back onto me. And suddenly, I was back into that personality. I was back into that program mind, and I was back in the matrix. And suddenly, I was full of fear. I went from a fearless, beautiful, infinite state of presence to being so afraid that now... I'm going to get my ass beat by my dad. And in fact, I did get my ass beat by my dad. But for two reasons. One, because I went into the woods I was not supposed to go. But also because when I came back, I tried to explain to my parents what had taken place in my life. My parents, not understanding, only saw what I was saying as some type of imagination or lie that I had created for myself. This would have been 1979, 80, 1980. And this was prime time for parents back then to, they would beat you in front of the whole neighborhood. There was no calling the the DCBS or, or whatever. So there I was ridiculed in front of this, this whole little neighborhood of ours. And even further, once we got in the house and being told to stop making up stories, to quit believing in that, that nothing happened to you, you're making this up. But this event, this experience, this direct experience of the divine that I had when I was eight years old was so powerful, yet the human condition can and often does suppress this. Many people are waking up, but all it takes is for someone to call you crazy or weird or different or what's wrong with you or this won't be tolerated, straighten up, act better, act right, which is what happened to me. 
So what is a spiritual awakening? What exactly happened to me that day? Well, for many years, I had no idea what happened. But I knew it was magical. I knew it felt beautiful. It was amazing. It was the greatest experience I could have ever imagined having in my life at eight years old. It was uncaused. I was not practicing spiritual practices. I was not, there was nothing like that. But what I did do when I walked into the woods that day is I said, fuck it all. And I risked something. I risked this, this human condition to surrender to that which is greater than the human condition. Not knowing exactly that that's what I was doing, but that is in fact what I was doing and that's what I did. And of course, I eventually suppressed it, which is very painful. It's like meeting, meeting the universe and then not being able to tell anyone about it because everyone thinks you're weird or crazy or something is wrong with you. And I knew eventually if I didn't suppress it, my parents would have had me some kind of evaluated and maybe even put on medication or something like that. Although I knew there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. I suppressed it, and in my teenage years, I fell into drugs and alcohol and crime, many other issues. When I was 16 years old, me and a friend of mine, we stole a police car. We drove it all the way to Florida, trying to escape the pain, drinking, smoking, popping pills, always trying to escape the pain. And then, of course, eventually, I found pornography. And it's not that looking at Naked bodies is wrong or bad, but when you do it for 12 hours straight, it becomes an issue, just like anything else. By the time I was 28 years old, I had five major addictions, and it was hopeless because I was the filth of the earth, right? My family didn't have money. I didn't have some prestigious name. I was working minimum wage job after minimum wage job. And somehow that little spark in my heart was still there. And it's in your heart as well. It's, we could say that maybe my story is a special story. And in some sense it is. But that spark is within you and you know it is within you. This light, this beauty. And then at the age of 28 years old, working At the mall in a music store, I came across this book called Reflections of the Christ Mind. And at that point, I had already left Christianity. I had already been raped and pillaged mentally by this so-called religion, this belief system that is built around some type of teaching that is meant for teaching the truth. There is absolutely seeds of truth within that religion and in every other religion. But this I had discarded from all the dogma, the judgment. Yet this book spoke to me, Reflections of the Christ Mind by Paul Farini. Hmm. And all it took was me to read two or three pages out of that book, and I immediately knew that the thing that I connected with at eight years old was what he was talking about in this book. And maybe for the first time in my life, I felt empowered to open that space back up again within me. And just like the day I stepped into the forest of Alaska, the great unknown I read that book from cover to cover, and I put that book down, and I dove back into the forest of my own heart, not to relive something that I once had, but to investigate. And this began this lifelong journey for me to investigate many religions, philosophies, to find out who and what has had this experience, this direct experience that I had. And through many teachers and many beautiful books, all which I will share with you, I met the one guru or teacher 
or being that sealed the deal that not only allowed me to see that when I was eight years old, there was something about this enlightenment, this momentary samadhi, but it sealed the deal that that is my fate now, and it is everyone's fate, and that is to wake up to who you really are. And that guru was none other than the great Ramana Maharshi. It only took one glimpse into his eyes. It only took a handful of sentences or stories being told by David Godman about Ramana that instantly recollected all that I was in my true estate with all that he is in his true estate. In 2011, I began to teach yoga. I became a yoga teacher. And not only was I teaching classes with physical postures, but I was teaching these these energetic glimpses of this pure awareness, of this dharma transmission, of this prana into everybody in my class. And it was beautiful and it was profound and it began to, to mirror back to me this energy and this love. And I stair-stepped my way into a deeper and deeper awakening until eventually that awakening stabilized, as I call it. And that's why I'm here today talking. It's why I've been teaching for years now. Because ultimately the point of it is not to share my story, but to invoke your story beyond all of your false stories about your life. Your false stories about body image issues and I have to do this because this is the way I was taught. What people are saying is this is the way I'm programmed and I'm stuck, but you're not stuck. The fuck you are. I am here to tell you today that you are not stuck. That is a grain of sand standing in your way on the beach of consciousness. And only because we are focused on that grain of sand does the grain of sand seem like it's a boulder. Like Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So put everything behind you. And when you put everything behind you, you can do it right now. You put everything behind you. Your relationship problems, your body image issues, your anxieties and OCDs, your, your fear of, of lack, your fear of abandonment, not being good enough, not worthy, your overly apologetic, people-pleasing bullshit, all of it, put it behind you and tell me, not because of anything I'm saying, but you tell me what is left. What is left? You might say, well, what is left is I'm sitting here and I can see furniture or I'm outside and I see trees. That's what's left. Put all that behind you. Put this 3D image behind you. You're not going to lose it. You can pick anything back up at any time. Why would you? I don't know, but you can do that. Put everything behind you. And what do you see? And the answers I typically get is people say, it's just nothing. It's pure awareness. It's nothingness. It's, it's love. It's bliss. It's openness. It's spaciousness. And this is what I call the heart space. You can call it anything you want. Pure consciousness, awareness, power of now, presence. And in this space, where are the programs? And, and if you sit here long enough, one of the programs are going to, they're going to come back. They're going to kind of float by like a cloud and they're going to say, Oh, don't forget. You have to do this and do that. Or people are going to be mad at you. Or even though your heart is to go to college to be an art teacher, you know, you have to go and be an attorney because you come from a, a family of attorneys and they're not going to allow you. Allow you? So a spiritual awakening, we can even put all the mystical experiences aside. We could put all of the definitions aside. Who are you? Looking within yourself and finding who you are in this spaciousness, not in all the gunk. 
that you are so used to focusing on that's out in front of you. Put it all behind you. And when you ask yourself, who am I? Without all of this stuff, something begins to open up. And maybe it's instant for you, or maybe it takes 20 years, but it'll it'll be the best fucking 20 years of your life, even if it's stair-stepping your way to this awakening. So what is spiritual awakening? It is waking up to who you really are before the world taught you who to be. And your parents, with all of their great intentions and all of that, is very likely were just as lost as everybody else in the world. So even in their good intentions, they still fucked you over by giving you these ideas of fat and skinny, giving you these ideas of rich and poor, giving you these ideas of you should fear this, (coughs) that you should fear this and this and this. And you believed them and you trusted them. And some of those things, once you hit your teenage years, you rebelled against. Some of you didn't even wait for the teenage years, but you rebelled against it. But here's the problem with rebellion against a program. Because there's a program here, you fight the program and you find its opposite and you do its opposite. Your parents say, uh, you know, don't wear pants with holes in them. But you're trying to create a fashion statement, so you... Put more holes in your pants. But the problem is, when we rebel against a program, all that comes out of that is another program. Why trace? Why trade one false identity for another? It's pointless. You can be any program, but you're still programmed. Or you can step away from all programming and unprogram yourself. I call that a spiritual awakening. And so many other people call it that as well. It's not my term, but it's a perfect term. Why? Because when you put down this 3D world, you wake up to the multidimensional world. When you put down all that you are not, you wake up to all that you are. When you put down and put behind you this finite, fake-ass character that you've been taught to play and you've adopted that character and you said, aye, aye, captain, I'll play this character. When you put that behind you, you wake up to your infinite, true, pure consciousness self. You can call it something or you can, you can not even involve yourself with words and concepts. Are you living your truest life? 99% of the people of this planet would say absolutely not, and they know they're not. And they say, but I can't right now because I've got this to do and I'm dependent on this and I just better do what people tell me to do. And what happens is eventually you build up such a animosity that once you grow up and become old, you do the same thing to everyone else. So you program your kids. Now listen, because I, I, I heard my parents saying this all the time. Now when I was growing up, I had to do what my mom said. Now you have to do the same. As if it's revenge. Yes, I will do what you tell me to do until I had that awakening. And even then, I was so suppressed, I, I continued in person. So I created this um, chameleon personality. Sure, I will be what dad wants me to be when I'm around dad. I'll be what mom wants me to be around, wants me to be when I'm around mom. And brothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends and, and, and teachers at school But I lost who I was in the process because my true identity and your true identity is none other than this pure consciousness. And once we dive so deep into this consciousness, we realize that this consciousness is connected to everything. It's all one. There, there is no two. There is no me and you. There is no us and them. There is no black and white, right or wrong, good or bad. None of those things exist. Those are all just programs. So my invitation to you today 
is instead of just understanding and knowing knowledge, mental knowledge of what spiritual awakening is. So so hopefully when you leave this video, you can say, I understand what spiritual awakening is, but not because this is what Billy said, or this is what Ramana said, or this is what Jesus said, or Buddha. It's because I know that you have had a similar experience that I did in Alaska. Whether it was as profound or less profound or longer lasting or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I know that you know you are not living the life of who you are from your heart space. You are living the life from the programmed mind. And many people are waking up. And many people are waking up halfway and getting stuck in spiritual awakening which is the whole point of my book, is to be a a, a roadmap to spiritual awakening. Because a spiritual awakening is amazing and profound, but if we just get stuck in it, then that's no good either. We have to keep moving forward with this energy of love and letting things go and keep putting things behind us. And that is what this podcast is. All the videos I make, my TikTok, that's what everything I do is about. But I do it in such a playful way because none of this is serious. I'm not asking you to step away from this podcast and say, okay, it's time to clean up my life and and give up this and give up that and, and go live in the woods so I can have a spiritual awakening because that also can just be a program in the mind. Why trade one false identity for other, for another? And the greatest thing about this space is that you can drop all the bullshit. You can even drop the spiritual bullshit. Put everything behind you. What is left? Don't allow the mind to analyze it and come up with all of these words. What is left? We, we can say nothingness or presence or love. I like love. Nothing. All that is left is this love, this flow, this current, the Tao, the Dharma, the Holy Spirit, we could even say, that is guiding us not from some false god or from some book, But it is this living energy, this frequency that moves through us. It's always moved through us. But if our our radio station is always tuned to the program, then all we know is the program. It's taking some time to sit and meditate and just let everything go. And in and of itself tunes us naturally to the frequency of this flow. And from here, all things are possible. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with in this life. What is a spiritual awakening? It is you letting go of everything that you are not. Seeing what is left and living your life from that space. And have fun in the process because there's nothing serious about a spiritual awakening. Yes, there are ups and downs. Stay as the awareness. Yes, there are going to continue to be bills. Stay as the awareness. Allow the awareness to move you to work. To work your job like you've never done it before in all of this beautiful essence and energy. And then you say to me, but Billy, I tried that. It just doesn't feel right. Okay, then then, then the Spirit is guiding you away from that job. But don't allow it to be just another program in your mind. Don't say, I'm embarrassed to work at Walmart and that's why I quit. That's just a program in the mind. Stay as this awareness and let the awareness unfold to you who and what you really are.
so much love for everyone. It doesn't matter to me where you come from, where you're going, where you've been, what you've done. I do not judge you, and I can promise you one thing. This awakening for you, however it unfolds for you, does not have to unfold the way it did for me, does not have to unfold the way it does for Eckhart Tolle or or Ramana. However it unfolds for you, I know that it is your ultimate purpose in this life, and that is to wake up and break out of this cage. I love you guys. See you in the next podcast. Namaste. Thank you for listening to the Path of Mystica podcast. Feel free to click the link in my bio that takes you to my link tree that is full of all kinds of good stuff to watch and listen to. Feel free to sign up for one of my many courses. I'm not a salesperson, so everything I do is donation-based, and I certainly appreciate any and all donations. Always remember, this is your life and your truth. Discovering who you are is the most important thing. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.